All right, what's going on everybody? So this is my impressions for Darksiders 3. Keep in mind, I'm recording this impressions on Saturday, November 24th, uh, but because the game is embargoed, you will be uh, viewing this video on the morning of November 26th is when uh, most I'll make it go live most likely. Uh, by that time, you know, several things are subject to change. Now, also, full disclosure, I only played a few hours of Darksiders 1 like many years ago. Never played Darksiders 2 and never beat either one of the games. Just like most of the people I know. I don't really know anybody who completed both Darksiders. Um, and that's not to say it's a bad game. You know, I don't think anybody really considers Dark the Darksiders series to be bad. It was just overshadowed by other games in its genre. Um, and usually I would never play a sequel in the series if I didn't play, you know, the predecessors. But since I was sent a review code, I went and did my research on uh, the previous game stories so I could be up to speed. So before I speak on the aspects of the game, let me say up front, so people know, because I'm sure a lot of people are on the fence about it, I really like this game. This Darksiders 3 is a really solid game. So like I said, I know a lot of people are on the fence about this game, and this is not really you know, getting a lot of spotlight. There's not a lot of hype surrounding it. If I had to describe it, I would say this is about 65% God of War, the old God of War, not the new one, and about 35% Souls games. And I love both of those games, and I think if you like both of those games, you'll love Darksiders 3. Now, so at the gameplay you're watching was me about maybe 12 hours in, and I've beaten about three bosses at, at the point in, in this video where you see me playing through it. Um, I'm recording it. My recording is actually when I'm up to the fifth boss. Uh, this recording, I'm, I'm around level, I would say, 30. Uh, currently, you know, in real time, at like I'm at like level 40. And that, I, I am over level, to be clear. Y'all know I like to, I like to, you know, level up my character as much as I can, do a bit of farming. So I'm definitely over leveled from from where I'm at. So let's talk about the story a little bit. So as I said, I did not play Dark play through Darksiders 1 or 2, but I did my research to learn the story. So if I make any mistakes on explaining the basic premise um, of the overall Darksiders plot, um, or you know, just Darksiders 3 specifically, the diehard uh, Darksiders fans, you know, they can feel free to cor correct me in the comment section. So um, Darksiders I initially thought that Darksiders 3 took place after 2, you know, obviously, but it actually takes place at the same time as Darksiders 1, and I learned that because pretty much when you get review codes, developer publishers, they usually send you uh, a little bit of review informational, and I uh, read the review informational and it said this takes place at the same time as Darksiders 1, so I was like, okay, cool. Okay, so the story. So in Darksiders, uh, there's an entity called the Chard Council, and the Chard Council is in charge of keeping the balance between heaven and hell, demons and angels, because there's a, you know, there's an ongoing constant war between them. Um, if one side were to ever become too powerful, they would intervene by like delegating some type of action. Like just like how our government has like different branches that uh, work as checks, like a checks and balance system. In this case, they delegate tasks uh, to the four horsemen of the apocalypse who, you know, we know are death, war, fury, and strife. Um, we played as death and uh, war in, in, in Darksiders 1 and one and 2. We play as fury in the third game. I've, I've been told by some Darksiders fan, fans that strife won't even be getting his own game. Um, so the other kingdom besides heaven and hell is the kingdom and kingdom of man. And kingdom of man is obviously the, the newest kingdom um, versus the other two. So even though the Chard Council doesn't take sides in, in this war, they, have, they still protect the human race because they have to keep, you know, a balance. You know, they, they in, like I said, they intervene and they, you know, put things into action to protect the human race just, just to keep a balance. Because the human race obviously can't compete with, you know, the forces of heaven and hell which are which are angels and demons and angels and demons are able to like influence mankind to kind of tip the scale in their favor uh in the war so you know it just has to be the chart council 
tries to keep the balance, um, a three-way balance between, you know, humans, uh, angels, and demons. So death and war are, you know, sent on their own task by the Chard Council, and so is Fury. Now, Fury's task uh, is to defeat the new greatest threat um, to the balance of the kingdoms, which are the seven deadly sins. So she has to go and defeat all seven deadly sins as demanded by the Chard Council. And that's pretty much the basic premise to Darksiders 3. And I'm enjoying the story so far. You know, I find it the, the, the concept of fighting the seven deadly sins, you know, pretty intriguing because, you know, that is something in real life that uh, affects, affects all of us. You know, we're all uh, in somewhat guilty of displaying the seven deadly sins. And what's really interesting is how the game designs each sin, you know, differently in their uh, character detail and their aesthetic to kind of personify what would that sin look like? You know, gluttony, you can kind of guess what gluttony would look like, what what pride would look like. Pride would definitely be, you know, a huge contrast to, um, you know, gluttony or, or sloth, right? So I, I find that concept pretty interesting. And like I said, I'm enjoying the story. All right, so let's talk about the gameplay. So as I said, the game is a combination between the old God of Wars and Souls games. It has, you know, hack and slash gameplay and like moderate, RPG elements like you know of course leveling up your character attributes upgrading weapons as you go through the game uh, Fury gains different hollow what, what's called hollow forms which you can consider almost elemental forms which not only comes with a different weapon uh, it comes with its own unique move set but also abilities that allow you to access areas that you were unable to prior so if you're like me and you have like item OCD and you want to get some of the best items, um, you have to, a good amount of backtracking is required after you unlock uh, each, you know, new ability, you know, because you're, you're definitely going to want to backtrack. By the way, I am playing on the second to hardest difficulty and on this difficulty, I can say if you don't like level up and go back and try to you know, gain an advantage by getting those items, it's going to be a, a harder time for you because this game is definitely challenging. And I'm going to get into how it's challenging um, in, a, in, in a little bit because you will die. Trust me, you will die some pretty often. I will say that you will definitely die quite often. So the merchant in the game, which I, I really like the merchant's personality. Um, I don't know. He just reminds me of the merchant. He reminds me of like the, the the demon form of the merchant from Resident Evil 4 kind of so you know I, I really like the merchant so the merchant is the source is the source to trade your souls for um, attribute points fast travel um, using the serpent holes and buy and sell uh, consumable items makers in this game is kind of like the architects or blacksmiths of Darksiders that's what they call them in Darksiders they call them makers and they handle weapon and armor upgrades uh, you know which require specific resources that you have to find around the game uh, to upgrade so just going you know along because this game is not linear there's many you know different paths you can take off you know off the beaten path of directly where you need to go and you need to stray off and explore those areas because that's where you're gonna find a lot of these items uh, to upgrade your weapons and just upgrade your character overall so you can switch between Fury's hollow forms um, at any time. And currently I have two hollow forms unlocked and you can see it by, you know, her red hair or her, her yellow hair. Um, and you can switch between them at any time. But I was kind of disappointed because you can't really seamlessly go from one form into another, like in the middle of a, an attack. Like you can't really attack cancel, which I think would be really cool because it would put increase the potential for attacks attack mix-up combinations and there's not even like a, a, a combo a combo counter on the screen so i guess that wasn't really uh much of a, a priority uh in the in this game was like you know racking up combos so let me explain why this game is challenging you know and why it's difficult there is no so there's no block button in this game right there's only a dodge button and i don't know if dark side was one or two was like that right so being that there's no block button, you obviously have to 
have very timely dodges, right? And the window for dodging can be somewhat small. Combined with the fact that there's a large variety of enemies uh, that attack in very different rhythms and patterns. And I got to applaud the game for having so many different types of enemies very early on in the game. You see very a lot of different variety as far as like enemy types go. Um, so when you dodge at the right time, right before an attack lands, uh, you can perform um, a counter attack. And you'll know if you perform a perfect uh, dodge because time will slow down a little bit right after you do the dodge. And then you could either press triangle, which is uh, your, which is the the button to attack with your hollowed with your hollow weapon, depending on which hollow form you're in, or you can counter with uh, her her basic weapon, which is her whip. Um, and you know they are different because, for example, if you counter with her flame hollowed weapon, it's slipping my mind exactly what's the name of the weapon. Then the enemy will take some uh, elemental damage. Uh, from the flame over time versus if you just counter with the whip it'll just be you know just regular damage now when your wrath meter is full you can perform a move called uh, a wrath attack and your wrath meter is right below your health right so and the wrath meter uh, your wrath attack is specific to the current hollow form that you're in so let's say I'm in flame hollow which is you know you could tell uh, you're in flame hollow when her head is on, on fire when it's red right she'll do a move I believe is called emulation where she completely ignites herself in fire and every you know little attack you you do does fire damage or in storm hollow she'll summon thunder uh, thunderstorms and um, like a like a, a few tornadoes that surround her and do damage to any um, any enemies in the area examples of this are all throughout the video just not exactly when I'm speaking so, and then you have your Havoc form. Now, going back to why uh, this game is also difficult is because pretty much there aren't really any invincibility frames in this game. You know, for some, for example, some games, like if you perform a counter attack, during the counter attack, you are invincible. You can't be hurt. You can, in this game, you could hurt, you could even die while in the middle of a counter attack. The only time you're invincible, the only time you have invincibility frames where you will not take damage is when you go into Havoc form, which is pretty much like Rage Mode. And she'll grow like triple her size and, and do like maximum whip damage and everything like that. So that's Havoc form. So that's pretty much all you need to know about the gameplay. Um, like I said, I think it's really fun. I'm, I'm enjoying it. It has depth, the RPG elements, um, the God of War hack and slash, the Souls element, so I, I'm really enjoying it. Now, as far as the, the visuals and, you know, the, the, the performance, I'm playing on PC, and the game is pretty well optimized. Um, I have my settings maxed out, and I'm at 1440p, and it stays at 60 uh, frames per second for the most part, unless there's, like, a large amount of enemies around. Um, I don't know what the console frame rate will be, but I did see a post stating that the Xbox One X version will target native 4K. And I think this game looks really good for its art direction. Obviously, it, it's not going to win any, you know, awards for, you know, best visuals or anything, but for what it is, I definitely think it looks good. Um, you know, and and it it's a full-fledged PC version, you know, all the options that you would expect, you know, shadow quality, view distance, texture quality, post processing, foliage, and you can clearly see how, you know, each option really affects um, how the game looks in game um, only thing that's kind of jarring is I, like I said once again this may be possible uh, subject to change the the cutscenes run at 30 frames which I hate ah that's that's so annoying you know you're playing the game a cutscene initiates and it just drops to 30 frames automatically that sucks so I don't know if that's gonna change that might stay the same but that's probably probably the worst thing as far as um you know the visuals go so uh yeah like i said i'm really enjoying the game i know some people are gonna want to know bluntly is this game worth a full 60 dollars it's gonna be 60 dollars on console i don't know you know what deals uh they will have for it at pc so will i say this game based on what i've played so far is worth a full 60 dollars no not necessarily but i think this game is a solid 40 45 dollar game like as soon as maybe it goes on sale from 60 i think it's it's a it's well worth a pickup 
in, in my opi my opinion. Um, the boss fights, I will say, I should mention that the boss fights are a little. The boss designs are amazing, but the boss fights them fight themselves are a little lackluster as it pretty much comes down to basic hack and slash melee. There's not really much complexity to each boss so far. You know, as far as like their attack patterns, their attack designs, it's typically, you know, dodge, a melee attack, you know, attack, it, you know, it, it kind of lacks that complexity. But overall, like I said, I've, I've really uh, been enjoying the game. So if you have any questions, uh, let me know in the comment section. I'll try to answer. Make sure you hit the like button. I appreciate all y'all support, supporting all my impressions, my reviews. Uh, follow me on Twitter. Links in the description for everything. Hit the notification bell so you can know anytime I go live. And yeah, I'm in... I'm enjoying always informing all of you about these games that I get to play early. So yeah, that's it, y'all. I'm out of here. Peace.